Hello everyone, this is Red with the RedDragonLeo.com and uh, this is Cobra's chart. Um, you all know who Cobra is, most of you have been over to his site, so I refer him all the time, he's a great chartist. Uh, but I want to point out something here that really stands out to me today. You know, I was, I had uh, told everyone that I expected uh, a down move today. We did get that, but it reversed quickly. And um, as you can see, the 60-minute chart rolled over and went down, quickly went down. It didn't go down uh, to this point, and I, and I believe I had called that in the video that I thought it might go down that far and uh, bounce off of that support but instead it just barely pierced the 50-day uh, moving average and then reversed hard um, after it was being oversold like that so uh, but let's go back to Cobra's chart here there's something really important here I want to point out about these patterns that really really stands out to me right now and that is this pattern right here back of the first week of August in the first week of August well prior to that we had uh, a big move up and then one, two, three, three to four days down, and then a huge candle up. Then sideways, sideways trading, and then we fell off a cliff. Okay, now look at this. Big, huge move up. Um, we went up huge on this day, went down three days, came back up on a big, huge day up, went down the next day, just like this one here. As you can see, that one right there, we went down the next day. And then, at, at this point, which was the same as this point, I imagine, um, I imagine that the 60-minute chart was probably uh, overbought right here and, uh, and, and rolled over the next three days. As it did here, basically 60-minute chart rolled over in the morning, went down, and then came back and closed positive. Okay? So, I don't, you know, I don't remember... I can't really go back and look at the, this, I don't guess, too well uh, to uh, find out exactly how this all played out. But I imagine looking at this, this big move up shot the daily into overbought territory. And then this move down right here was basically as the 60-minute chart was probably really peaked out, I would imagine, right here. And fell off a cliff that, that particular day here and then reversed hard. The end closed slightly negative and then popped up the next day and I would I would estimate that this second move made it overbought again and from this move to this move I would say this one would have put the higher histogram tower in and this one put a lower histogram tower in creating the negative divergence and at the same time this one two three four five six seven day movement allowed the daily to roll over which basically um, once the daily started to line up with a move down and the 60 minute moved with a, a day down, that's what caused this big sell off right here the following day. I think we're in a similar pattern to that. It just looks eerily familiar. I think tomorrow we're going to uh, try to pop up based upon the um, 60 minute chart. Uh, I guess we'll try to pop up. I don't know if it's going to break this uh, 1150 or not. I'd love to see it uh, gap up in the morning, clear some stops out, and come back and put in a topping tail. Uh, that would be ideal. I don't know if it's going to do that or not because uh, there's so much overhead resistance right here. And this has really held quite well. And here it, it held quite well too. Uh, so, but I believe we are basically tomorrow it's going to. Uh, look like either this candle or this candle, one of these. Meaning that today, today's candle right here is, is similar to either this reversal candle or this one here. Maybe just couple these two together and call that one day. Let's just pretend, okay? Um, because we're running out of time on, on the week, and I think that uh, it's going to turn down on Thursday and Friday. So Thursday. I think could possibly put in either a candle like this one or like this one and then Friday we're just going to fall off a cliff um, you know that's kind of what I'm looking for to happen if for some reason it, it, it you know if that that turns out to be Friday then this would be Monday you know a bloody Monday you know what we, we, we'll call it so there's multiple reasons I'm looking for that Woody on my site uh, posted 
the um, link to the meetings. Uh, I'm sorry, not the meetings, but the um, the Fed's uh, buying of the Treasury bonds. You posted a link to that. I put that in my uh, helpful. Um, let me see here. Let me go here and see if I can't find it here for you. Uh, I put it in my helpful links site. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Oops. Let me refresh the page here. I'll refresh the page. But I put it right here under uh, no, under uh, helpful information. There's a link here that we should be checking on on a regular basis as traders. So if I forget this, uh, if you guys will remind me of it, I would appreciate it because... I've got lots of links on here, and I, I can't even check them all myself. Um, but I like to give credit to other people who who do a great job and stuff. And and so I added. Uh, by the way, today I added the um, um, site for uh, let's see, um, Half Past Human, another red pill site. It's a subscription site, but it's still uh, a good site. So okay, here under this, the tentative outright. Treasury operation schedule. This tells you when the Fed is going to buy, uh, when they're going to spend their money and going to buy, buy up uh, the Treasuries. Okay, so here's what they got. They got one today, uh, the September 28th. It happened at 10:15, exactly when the market rallied. They come in, they they use their money, and uh, basically bought up the market. Now the chart said it was going to roll back up anyway. So when you when you look at the charts, um, you know it said that anyway. So let's go back to the charts here, and let's uh, let's look here at the at the 15. The 15 minute showed you that we were ready to roll over anyway. As you can see, we were going down. We put in a smaller histogram tower, creating a negative divergence, and it showed that it was ready to roll down in the morning anyway. It got oversold quite a bit on the 15. And the same thing for the 60. The 60 was here yesterday, folks. And so the 60 and the 15, the, the two more important charts when it comes to us swing traders trying to get in and out, they basically, it opened in the morning and shot down. And, and it got oversold quite quickly. And this time period was around the 11 or 10, 15 time period when they injected the money into the system. So what we're looking for here obviously we can see here that it is running up i am looking for a smaller histogram tower to to happen and i'd love to see a gap up in the morning uh that will uh, quickly fade and fail but um, i'd love to see at least gap up here and, and well you know should at least tag this and clear out some of these overhead stops before they tank it and put in a topping tail like this right here you see that right there? That move there? That's what we're looking for. And we're looking for this to be real quick, right in the morning on the first 10 minute candle, first five, 10 minute candle. Okay? Um, so, anyway, we can see here that the Fed, who controls the market, uh, basically injected money into the system. Now, the charts told us it should have turned anyway, but not necessarily to the strength and degree that it did. A reversal today so it shook out a lot of bears today this is a shake a squeeze whatever you want to call it they're you know shaking them off the trees right now and before they get ready to take it I you know I don't know that this is the wave three of three of three that, that we're all looking for but to me things are looking very very bearish and it looks to me like we are going to sell off pretty hard on Thursdays and Fridays and close this week negative uh, I don't know about next week. Uh, we'll have to take that, uh, you know, when we get there and see what the charts do. But if those weeklies roll over and the dailies roll over, then yeah, we're going to have a bad next week, you know. So we just have to look at that when we get there. But so anyway, so September 30th if it's Thursday morning. Uh, that means Thursday morning they could put a little money into the system. Now after that is October 5th. That's is Tuesday. So between Thursday and Tuesday. They got no money to put in the system. Now, at the same time, Mr. Topstep had mentioned in his video, Danny Riley, uh, uh, he mentioned in his video that the portfolio managers run out of money by um, Thursday, the last day of the quarter, which is this Thursday, September the 30th, that they run out of money usually around 1130 or 
or 12, and uh, by then they basically, um, the market is just free to fall at that point. So we have Thursday morning, we got the last bit of Fed money being pumped in, and we also have the uh, last bit uh, of the money from mutual funds from the portfolio managers and stuff like that for the quarterly. Okay, so they're going to put that money in there and by noon it's going to be exhausted and there'll be nothing left. Well, this is perfect timing to allow this to roll up in the morning tomorrow. And I know I said that's Thursday, okay, but tomorrow might be the best time to get short simply because I don't know how high it's going to get on Thursday just because they're going to put more money in. And, you know, that this may be the last little bit of scraps, you know, so how high are they going to be able to rally? That doesn't mean that it's, that it, it's not going to go up here on Wednesday, uh, put in a smaller histogram tower, and uh, and then roll over, um, you know, either early in the morning or late in the evening. I don't know when. Depends on how quick they put this in. If it's a gap up and puts a real high bar in, then I'd say it's going to just roll over throughout the rest of the day. But if it doesn't, if it kind of just opens flat or something and just kind of slowly works its way up, then, yeah, it's going to take all day for it to, to, to roll over. And you're just going to watch this chart to see how high it gets and couple it with the 15-minute chart, too. But anyway, once it starts to roll over, um, going into Thursday, I don't know how much money they're going to have left, but I, I, just, I just feel like, you know, my gut tells me that Wednesday tomorrow might be the best day to get short that by the following day um, by Thursday. Thursday might look like this candle and Friday might look like this candle. So if tomorrow Wednesday is like this candle, and again we're going back to this uh, August time period as you can see right here because the similarities are very very uh, similar. As you can see up move three down days, up move three down days, uh, big candle up, big candle up, even though this is blocked by this box here. You can see it cl it closed red here just like this. And then we had this long bottoming tail right here to fool everybody. It's not a bottoming tail, folks. It's, it's just like this one here. It's just where the 60 gap down and rose back up in the morning. That's it. Same thing that happened today. And I told people on the blog today that, you know, no, today's not the best day to get short. I think tomorrow or possibly Thursday. Uh, just depends on how much money they have. But you can see even on this previous candle, it, it, it opened probably here, shot up, and uh, then fell back. And I, I don't know exactly what happened that day. I don't remember. But regardless, you can see it did not break that, that, uh, that high. So it looks like Wednesday, or I don't know what day that was. But whatever day that was, that was the high. Well, that could be very well tomorrow, too. And look at where the, the daily is here. Look at the bars here. Look at where we're going here. Look at the bars here on this, folks. Okay, it was still pointing up. There was no sign of a cross. As a matter of fact, it didn't get to cross until afterwards, until it was later. So it didn't get to cross until we had a big down day. So we don't want to wait that long. We want to get the optimal timing, and we want to get it, you know, before it happens. So you can see this, this move here had one, two, three towers putting in a triple negative divergence before it fell off a cliff. But the the time period that it did, it was still pointing up. And so you can cover this up and just look to the left and you can see there was no cross. Well, same thing here. Just cover this up. Pretend like the next day or two, it's ready to, to roll over. And and so we don't we don't have three uh, negative or negative divergences here, but we do have, I guess you could say, we have, well, that little bar there is lower and then that one's higher. Okay, and that one's lower and that one's higher. So I guess you could somehow make three out of this if you really worked hard at it. But regardless, you can see it is going down towards the zero line and ready to roll over. Same thing here on this. Um, I really, really feel like we are at a point where we are getting ready to just fall off a cliff this Thursday and Friday and really tank hard. Uh, there's just all kinds of signs to it. This just chop, 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 just beating up the bears. And, and all it's doing is basically, folks, is just letting these charts align themselves to where they're all pointing down. That's really all it's doing. Um, the 60-minute, the daily, the 15-minute, the 30-minute, uh, they're all just basically here's the 5-minute, here's the 30-minute. The 30-minute shows we've got to go up too. So I think everyone should get short tomorrow is uh, what I think I'm looking for. So I'm running out of time here on this. But um, if it pops up here again tomorrow, I think that's your best shot to get short. Good luck, everyone. See you tomorrow.